Hello students, this is your Bhushan sir. Hope all of you are safe and fine at home. In the previous session, we have discussed on the topic of externals or morphology of Dugesia under the type study of Platyhelminthus. In continuation of it, today we shall study the digestive system of planaria. As we all know, energy is the backbone of any activities in the body. The food that an animal consumes need to be digested, oxidized to release the energy present in it. It is done at two stages in the body of an animal that includes extracellular digestion which takes place outside a cell um, which includes generally the digestive canal or alimentary canal and the other stage is intracellular digestion where the digestion further takes place uh, within the cell to release the actual energy required for a cell system. Now we shall understand the alimentary canal and feeding and digestion process of food uh, by the planaria organism. Objectives of the study includes study about the Features of digestive system are parts of the digestive system of planaria. The second important feature that we are going to understand is and our objective is feeding more of planaria. The content includes study of elementary canon and physiology of digestion. The elementary canon of platyhelminthus is seen For the first time in the whole animal kingdom, here in case of the planaria or platyhelminthus. The digestive system is called incomplete digestive system, where the part called anus is totally absent, which is responsible for the addition of the digestive waste. It is taken care by uh, the structure of mouth itself. So the digestive system is called as incomplete digestive system where anus is absent and we also see that the mouth structure does the function of addition of the digestive waste. The alimentary canal as far as uh, 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 it is considered it is said to be very simple. It is called simple digestive, I mean uh, canal or di uh, elementary canal because it includes very less number of uh, parts like uh, mouth, pharynx and intestine. The elementary canal is said to be muscular. It is made up of muscles. Mouth is a small oval or round opening seen on the uh, midventral side of the body of the pharynx, I'm sorry, of the planaria. It is the common opening for both intake of food and addition of digestive waste. Mouth leads into a short a mouth cavity which joins behind a cylindrical tubular pharynx. So that's the importance of mouth structure. Students remember mouth is a round oval aperture seen on the midventral side of the body which does the function of ingestion and adjustment of the digestive waste. The next part is the pharynx. We know elementary canal contains only three parts. Number one, 
mouth number two pharynx number three intestine so the second part is the pharynx here pharynx is uh, present in a pouch of pharyngeal cavity covered by a muscular cover called as pharyngeal sheath so the actual structure of pharynx is a cylindrical tube made up of muscles which is covered over by a pharyngeal a sheath which is made up of muscles pharynx as we know it is a tubular or cylindrical tube which is thick walled and highly muscular in nature and it is attached to the structure of the pharyngeal sheath uh, directly pharynx is very special here in case of planaria because it acts as the organ of feeding even though mouth is present the actual process of intake of food is taken care by the structure of pharynx um this pharynx can come out of the body and can go back into its original position when it is protrusible that is when it comes out for feeding it forms the tubular uh, muscular cylindrical tube structure which is similar to that of the trunk or proboscis of an elephant hence the structure of pharynx is also called as proboscis so as long as the mouth structure and pharynx is within the body of the animal uh, we cannot call it as far uh, proboscis but when the pharynx comes out of the body for the feeding it looks like a proboscis uh, uh, of an elephant so that's the importance of the proboscis uh, or the pharynx structure um down in the picture you can see towards the uh, uh, left side the proboscis and towards the right side you have the diagram showing the structure of mouth and pharynx within the body so one is protruding out one is resting back in its original position the next specialized part of the alimentary canal is the intestine students remember in case of dugesia behind the structure of the pharynx the posterior end of the pharynx will lead inside the structure of the intestine intestine is divided into three branches one extends towards anterior head region at middle line of uh, uh, the body so right from the mid ventral location you find an extension of the uh, 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 branch of intestine towards the head region so towards anterior region so this moves exactly at the center of the body hence it is called as anterior branch anterior middle branch also we can call it as whereas the rest two branches extends down of towards the posterior side at lateral position so when you look at this is the position of the pharynx uh, uh, the one which moves upward is towards the head we call it as anterior branch so down you have two branches one towards the right side the other one towards the left side so these two branches are lateral in position uh, hence they are called as lateral branches so right one and the left one correspondingly we can call them as otherwise these are together are uh, referred as the posterior branches so we have one mid anterior branch and two posterior lateral branches so this is about the importance of the intestine of dugesia now all the three branches of the intestine are further branched out to form irregular pouch like structures so the intestine portion of uh, uh, either the branch of anterior or of two posteriors when we look at each of the tube again sub branches to form uh, sac like structures and these sac like structures that attaches to the main branch of the intestine are called as diverticula what do you call those sub branches as diverticula so this diverticula uh, uh, makes the intestine to have a much more branching uh, for the intestinal area so that 
much of the absorption and distribution of food takes place within. So digestion of food uh, 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 takes place within the structure of this diverticle of the intestine very much. So that's the uh, importance of the uh, branches of diverticula. So overall, the branched intestine of the animal will help in increase of the surface area for the digestion. The second one is reabsorption process of the nutrients and it also increases the space for the distribution of the food. So that's about the importance of intestine. So branched intestine or branched gut you find for the uh, 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 structure of intestine in case of platyhelminth especially of uh, planaria. Now structurally when we look at the intestine to know it or to study it we need to have the section of the intestinal uh, part of the body. So here down is a picture which depicts the central most intestinal portion um, surrounded by the other body organs and parts and which is further surrounded by the skin epidermal layer. So the structure of the intestine right at the center what you find here that is the intestinal portion. When you look at it is made up of single layer of vacuolated columnar epithelial cells. It contains generally the granules and also some special uh, some cells of the intestine uh, 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 which are said to be columnar are specialized to form the glandular activity or secretory activity. And some cells start uh, uh, storing the uh, proteins and uh, generally we call it as the reserve proteins. So this is about the importance of the intestine uh, wall layer and it encloses a large cavity uh, for the inflow of food. So that's about the alimentary canal structure. Students remember we have learnt about uh, uh, how exactly uh, the parts of the digestive canal or alimentary canal uh, is positioned and what is their structural details and what exactly is the function of each of this part. After we understanding the alimentary canal of planaria, next we will move on to food feeding and digestion process in case of planaria. Here, the next part that we are going to understand is the food feeding and digestion process in case of planaria. Planaria feeds on small living larvae of crustaceans and snails. Uh, generally, it is called as carnivores. You know, you can see that uh, in this slide, a diagram one and two. So where a planaria is feeding on the foot. So when we say carnivorous, it feeds on the other miniature forms of the larvae and organisms. Sometimes planaria can also feed on the larger uh, dead animals uh, body pieces that flows in the water. So when fishes eats the major part of the body of the dead animals, crabs eat, uh, feeds on this dead animal, some portions of it is left in the water. Such pieces of dead animals will be fed by uh, uh, this planaria. Hence it is also called as detrivorous because it feeds on dead animals. So planaria is both carnivorous and it is also detrivorous. Planaria can perceive the presence of the presence of food and move towards it. You know, it is also uh, brought about by these receptors present on the body of it. If the food is living tight, when the food, what it needs to consume, if it is living, uh, 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 if it is in living condition, then the planaria moves to the place of the food availability and starts pouring a slimy mucous substance which will entangle the food, which will cover the food totally. After it pours out the uh, mucus 
secretions, the food gets entangled within the mucus. So it appears to be a ball structure. Now this ball of uh, food, what it contains is the entangled prey or the food surrounded by the secretion of the mucus. So this food now is drawn inside by the protrusible pharynx, which we call it as proboscis. So proboscis moves out of the body and it holds the food tightly. And when it holds, due to the muscular activity of the pharynx, the food is broken and then it is taken inside the body. So as the food is drawn inside, uh, the muscular activity of pharynx acts upon the food and breaks it into minute pieces. Later, when it reaches the structure of the intestine, the food now will be uh, 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 subjected for the intestinal um, digestive juices. So intestinal di di digestive juices will be poured upon this food and the uh, process of digestion of food takes place within the intestine. It is this diverticula or the sites where we find the enzymatic secretions of the digestive juices. So that's about the importance of um, the feeding and digestion. Now, the food breaks up, as we know, by pumping action of the pharynx and pieces of food is swallowed. The digestive enzymes act upon the food. For further digestion, the digested food is diffused into the um, into the uh, uh, diverticula. Now, after the food undergoes the digestion process, the digested food is now sub is subjected for the transportation to the neighboring mesenchyme cells. You know, if it is a diverticula, it will be surrounded by the mesenchyme cells. So this mesen uh, uh, mesenchyme cells or the parenchymatous cells starts absorbing the nutrients from the diverticula. If this is a diverticula, if this is, these are the mesenchyme cells, they draw up the food into them. So it takes place by a simple uh, osmotic uh, 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 process and even by diffusion. So now the food will reach the structures of mesenchyme cells. Inside every cell of this mesenchyme, there occurs the oxidation of food, where the actual food breaks within. So remember students, uh, within the digestive canal, the extracellular digestion process is occurring, where enzymes are poured on the food and the food is assimilated. Now this digested food will be entering into the mesenchyme cells by diffusion process and inside the structure of the mesenchyme cell, the process of oxidation of or breakdown of the food takes place. Uh, uh, breaking down of food will release out enormous energy in the form of ATP molecules which are uh, utilized by the organism here. So the process where within mesenchyme cells you find the further digestion of food is called as intracellular digestion. Thus, the digestion in case of uh, uh, planaria is both extracellular as well as intracellular digestion. And this mesenchyme cells are the cells which are responsible for the distribution of the digested food to the body. And they supply further the energy to the neighboring cells. Now, whatever the undigested food is left out in the digestive canal, not in the mesenchyme cells, in mesenchyme cells, the end products are called excretory waste. Whereas inside the digestive canal, that is diverticula, the undigested food is now collected back and it will be sent through the pharynx and through the mouth it will be ejected. So, ejection process of undigested uh, food from the digestive canal is done through the structure called as the mouth. Another interesting feature related to the planarian, uh, planaria is planaria can live without food for a longer time. So sometimes planaria will uh, starve. So during that period when they starve, 
these starve, uh, during this starving period, the planaria organisms will not die. You know why? The nourishment is obtained by dissolving the internal organs present inside the body, which are not in use for that particular moment, like uh, mesenchyme cells, muscles, reproductive organs, etc. These reproductive organs will be dissolved. So the food or nutrients, what it gets is uh, during starvation, it, it, its own organs. So those organs are eaten away by the animals. So thereby the planaria will reduce in its size and uh, such missing parts will be regenerated back uh, during the uh, onset of uh, the favorable conditions. Uh, this we call it as power of regeneration. So if a reproductive organ is lost during starvation process, then during onset of the favorable condition, those organs are newly formed, which we call it as regeneration. Likewise, any missing parts of the body can be regenerated by the animal. Hence, it is called as power of regeneration. So planaria is known for predominant or dominant uh, uh, process of power of regeneration. Down in the picture here in the slide, you can see a planarial organism broken into three parts. Each of that part will form the tiny planaria. So this is the capability of uh, uh, regeneration in case of planaria organism. So this is seen only during the starvation process uh, uh, by eating away its own uh, organs. Well, students, after that completes the process of digestion or physiology of digestion also. So let us check to what an extent we have understood the concept of a, a digestive system in case of planaria by having certain of MCQ questions. Question 1. Shall we start? What is one way in which the gut system of planaria is highly specialized? Gut refers to the digestive system here, especially of the intestine. So, how special is the intestine in case of, uh, or I mean, uh, the uh, digestive system in case of planaria is? A. It has both a mouth and an anus. So, the answer is wrong because uh, planaria doesn't have an anus. It has no circulatory system. Huh? It is not a specialized character, even though it is a general character. C is, it has a branching gut cavity. So you can find the branchings of the gut cavity. So that could be the right reason, the uh, answer. And the fourth one is, it has direct interaction with the environment. So answer should be C. Question 2. Incomplete animal, uh, alimentary canal occurs in which of these animals? Dugesia, Ascaris, Ucheraria, Rhabditis. So, Dugesia is the common name of Planaria. I'm sorry, scientific name of Planaria. So, Planaria will be the right answer here. A. Regeneration of last parts in the body due to starvation is best shown by a platform, I'm sorry, the uh, flat worm. So which particular platyhelminthus shows uh, last part's regeneration during the starvation process? It is again Planaria dugesia. So answer is B. Fourth question. The digestive system in Planaria is simple, incomplete, muscular. So all the three points are correct. So Answer D will be the right answer here. Fifth question. The part used for addition of digestive waste in planaria is. So undigested uh, uh, waste of the digestive system is thrown out by which part? Diverticular, pharyngeal sheath, mouth and anus. So it is mouth because it is an incomplete digestive system. So answer is C. The next question. Planaria is herbivorous, carnivorous, omnivorous, sanguivorous. Herbivorous means it will feed on plants only. Carnivorous means it will feed on the other animals. Omnivorous means it can feed on anything. 
Sanguivorous, it refers to uh, feeding on the blood. So it is carnivorous. Answer is B. Well, students, the outcomes of this session is we have understood the unique features related to the digestive system of planaria and physiology of feeding related to planaria. The references include um, the web references like Wikipedia and Britannica. Textbooks include invertebrate zoology by Verma and modern textbook zoology by uh, Kotpal. Well, students, with this, we are completing this uh, digestive system with reference to planaria. If you have any queries or comments, please post it to my personal WhatsApp number. Stay at home. Stay safe. Take care of your health during this pandemic time. Thank you all students.